for the 110 volt power supply that was in an earlier video and not in one earlier videos but in many earlier videos on my youtube channel I needed a, a cooling fan uh, because these transistors in the Darlington got very hot of course I can leave it this way uh, but with a cooling fan um, I can use this power supply for a longer time because of course when the uh, temperature of the end transistors gets too hot gets too high they will burn out um, that really can happen and even when everything seems to be okay there is uh, when we are talking about silicon transistors always the so-called second breakdown a, a very critical combination of voltage and current and you can find surely more information about the second breakdown phenomenon on the World Wide Web. I cannot pay attention to it now because uh, it's uh, about uh, my ventilator circuit. And here you see the ventilator that I used. You can surely hear it. Uh, there are good and bad things about these ventilators. The bad thing is that they have uh, some electronics inside here. So inside that um, <coughs> ventilator there is a, a piece of electronics and I'm more or less sure, you can see it here, that it is a, um, an electronic circuit that changes switch off it for a while, uh, that changes the, a, uh, the DC into AC to drive these uh, four coils in a certain sequence so that this can move. This is what moves. I've completely uh, I've broken it apart. I um, say reversed in my first experiment the positive and the minus to this um, ventilator. This ventilator here is exactly the same. And well, uh, the, reason, uh, the result was that it immediately was defective within a half a second or so. So that was a problem. Often these ventilators only consist of a, a motor. No electronics inside, but this this one had electronics inside. Well, there must be a good reason for that. Absolutely sure. Perhaps it <coughs> will not take so much current. Uh, it can be driven better. It can be controlled by a um, computer. Of course, these fans are used in many times in computers. And perhaps the, there must be a variable um, voltage to the fan so that the, the control, the air control, can be, can be uh, controlled. Anyway, this is the circuit and it's in fact extremely simple. Uh, I want to refer to earlier videos, etc, etc, because we have here that fan. Uh, we have to take in account that there is some electronics inside. So we cannot be very coarse um, by giving this ventilator a DC voltage. So it must be in some way uh, be more or less stabilized. Not too high, not too low. When it is somewhat too high, immediately the electronics will burn out. So that's the reason why I made it this way. Here's the AC um, a silicon diode, the one N5408. Here a kind of rectification, of course this is a one phase uh, uh, way of rectifying. I did do that by purpose. I want to keep the components the amount of components as minimal as possible. Here is a resistor 
that more or less drops down the voltage and here is the transistor regulator that also drops down the voltage with the help of that Zener diode. This is a classical series regulator here. Like there are many of them on my YouTube channel. Anyway, when you do these experiments this resistor is more or less critical. Uh, it's for a big part responsible for the maximum current that can flow in the circuit and the maximum current that the ventilator needs. This is a ventilator made for 1.8 watts, so approximately 2 watts and 12 volts. And do the calculation, I cannot do it at this moment, but anyway, you can surely see the maximum, sorry, the best current that such a ventilator needs to work properly. I am by the way always very conservative uh, in these kinds of circuits. I don't want to overload the ventilator with a too high voltage and thus as an effect too high current and especially uh, because there are electronics inside that have to do a certain job. So that's the reason why I have chosen here for a 10 volt Zener. So anyway, the transistor must be mounted on a heat sink. This diode can be any silicon diode that can handle say uh, 3 ampere at 500 volts or 1000 volts. The capacitor has by purpose a high voltage, say 100 volts. Uh, could also be somewhat lower, but uh, because it's a one phase uh, rectifier, there could be peak voltages. Of course, not in this case because, because it is on, under a constant load and a constant current, so no peak voltages will happen here. And also, here, very conservative uh, voltage is chosen 63 volts. So, the circuit in practice that's here. It's very, very simple to make it. The BD139 here. And here are these two resistors. Uh, they together form, they are say, uh, 3 watt resistors. So they can withstand the heat, but they get quite warm. And I do that by purpose to, in a certain way, protect the, uh, the transistor for an excessive heat. It's better that such a resistor burns out on the longer term, say after two years or so, than that the, trans the transistor burns out. Anyway, here is the resistor that has to be mounted in the circuit. This is a real power power uh, resistor, not transistor, resistor. 150 ohms. I, I think it can handle 10 watt or so and I will uh, change this setup by this setup and when you make such a circuit it's perhaps a good idea uh, to make it in such a way that the stream of air coming out of the ventilator flows also flows around that power transistor. Of course when you have a ventilator circuit in a uh, power supply and you do you make this in the primitive way that I've made it could be that of course when the power supply uh, gives out its voltage the AC voltage on the transformer uh, secondary will drop and that will of course mean that the ventilator slows down. The problem is here uh, not visible and not the case because I've used a voltage doubler but anyway in that case uh, search for the right resistor value so that there is a certain bandwidth in terms of voltage between say approximately 8 volt and 12.5 volts where this um, stabilizer works in all cases. I want to demonstrate now what happens when I uh, give this power supply the maximum output current, that means that I switch the protection off. You can hear that the ventilator slows down somewhat. But 
it's not dramatically so it still works it keeps on working while at the same time power supply gives out its maximum current and voltage so maximum power so that were a few things to tell thanks for watching everything is very simple and especially when you have a ventilator without all these uh, strange electronics inside the whole circuit um, uh, is perhaps even much more easy to make here the AC voltage that's and here the DC voltage on the ventilator approximately 8 volts of course and you use another zener diode say 11 volts perhaps even 12 volts the output voltage will go up that's all also a way to get the the most ideal voltage and current out to drive such a ventilator back to the circuit easy circuit to make with minimum components and when you use a good quality here power uh, uh, resistor it can work for many many years without any problem I see that something starting to smoke here don't know exactly what it is I think it's a kit with which I have fixed the uh, the two heat sinks together anyway uh, that's the reason why I need this ventilator it will surely cool down the power supply 